here to discuss about a very uh, beautiful topic, intellectual property rights. So um, before I start, I'll share my PPT so that you all will have a reference. Are you all able to see my PPT here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. It's visible, ma'am. Sure. Okay, so uh, I need not introduce myself again because uh, Shashank has given uh, already given my introduction. So uh, we will start with the topic intellectual property rights. So the name uh, itself. Sorry to interrupt you, ma'am. Uh, ma yes. Uh, ma'am, you yes. can also uh, uh, introduce uh, yourself if uh, something is missed from my side. Okay, okay. Sure, sure. So myself, uh, my name is uh, Tanu Singh and uh, 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 we have a company called Intellect with their solutions, myself and one of my partner. So we have uh, our uh, physical presence in Bangalore and uh, we deal with all kind of intellectual property rights like patents, design patents, uh, copyright, trademark, trade secret and all kind of uh, IPR protection. So we are basically involved in, uh, you know, dealing with uh, different kind of clients like uh, colleges, startups, corporates, individual inventors. So uh, we try and understand their requirement and based on the nature of work, what they have created, we uh, advise them, we suggest them uh, uh, the proper IPR protection, how they should get best protection of their work and then we help them to file their IPs. And uh, I am a registered patent attorney uh, uh, with an experience of 11 years. And uh, uh, we, my, I majorly deal with patents and design patents. I'm also an IPR facilitator uh, registered with the Indian Patent Office. So that's how we help a lot of startups because they, as we are the IPR facilitators, so they approach us for IPR uh, consultations and also IPR filings. So that is about me. And uh, uh, of course, we have a keen interest to uh, contribute towards IPR awareness as well. And uh, that is the reason uh, we conduct a lot of workshops and sessions. And whenever given an opportunity, we try and, uh, you know, speak about this topic so that, you know, uh, people get more clarity about this uh, subject. So that's about me and uh, our company. So now let's start with the topic. Okay, so uh, innovation. So when we talk about IPR, IPR and innovation can be a synonym to each other. So uh, IPR is always given for a new innovation. So how do how do a person innovate? So it is always in terms of technology, uh, which is viable and which is desirable to the end user. So your innovation should always be in the line of a uh, line of product which is helpful and which is easily acceptable by the end user. So that is called good innovation and incremental innovation. So year by year, if we see, we are showing good progress in terms of IPR position uh, among uh, in the world. If we compare our country as a IP, uh, IPR positioning, then we are, you know, progressing year by year. And last year in 2023, it was seen a tremendous increase in patent filings, copyright filing, trademark filing, design filing. So all these filings have increased tremendously from last year. And we are seeing the same trend. 
I think by status, some stati uh, statistics came out recently in the newspaper, wherein they were saying that we are growing by 11% each year in terms of patent filings. So this was a recent event, uh, uh, a startup Mahakumbh event, which was organized in Delhi. Uh, recently, I think last week it happened, wherein uh, our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji, he spoke at length about, uh, you know, intellectual property rights and its importance in today's competitive environment. He also spoke about how patent becomes the key for a startup how uh, critical it is for the startups to you know protect their innovation via patent so that uh, you know they their pay, their ideas their core asset doesn't get copied by their competitors so before we uh, speak uh, you know get more into intellectual property rights we will generally speak about property so Basically, you can divide property into two types, tangible property and intangible property. So tangible property, we all know all the physical assets which we have, like house, land, jewelry, anything, all the physical assets that you own, they are all tangible property. And the intangible property are your ideas, your concepts, okay? These are the intangible assets which can be protected via intellectual property rights. So the <clears throat> word itself says that intellectual property right is anything which is created by one's own intellect. What, uh, what this sentence means is anything which a person has developed or innovated or created by using his own skills. That is called intellectual property rights. You can also call it, call it as an intangible property or an intangible assets. So to protect this kind of assets, to give the uh, you know uh, owner owner of the property some recognition and value, the legal authority. Uh, like our patent office, they uh, recognize such good ideas and concepts and they protect it via patents, copyrights and different forms of IPR. And they give you a legal ownership over your work so that you can generate value. You can even generate money out of your, uh, you know, uh, work. So different kinds of intellectual properties are there. I already mentioned. So for the king of IPR protection is always patents because patent gives a much broader area of protection to your work. And uh, patents are always given for inventions. It is always given for some product or a process. These kind of things are protected under patent. And copyright, uh, any literary or artistic work, like someone has written a book or someone has written a, a you know, lyrics of the song. So these are the kind of work uh, uh, for which the author or the owner uh, can protect it via copyright. Then comes the industrial design. So industrial design from the name itself, you can make out it is given uh, the protection is given for the design of the product or for the aesthetic appearance of the product. So it is very different from patent because it has nothing to do with the technicality or the functionality or the working mechanism of the product. It only protects the look and feel, the aesthetic appearance of the product. Then trademark. Trademark is also a very important form of IPR because you can associate trademark with your brand uh, building. Okay, so suppose as a startup, you start your own company, but as you grow with time, your company is recognized by its name, by its logo. Okay, of course, reputation and goodwill is a part of, uh, you know, uh, part of the trademark. But uh, trademark becomes very important as a part of your success journey. So uh, because this is the uh, type of IPR which helps you to protect the name of the company or the logo of the company 
or the uh, you know uh, uh, slogan of the company uh, any mascot if you are using for the company all these things are getting protected under trademark then comes the geographical indication so geographical indication is kind of a collective uh, collective product mark and it is given for it is given to the community it is not given to an individual inventor or a owner it is given to a community then comes the trade secret trade secret is given for the uh, 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 it is basically to keep the information secret it is mainly given for some uh, uh, formulas or techniques or you know business formula these kind of things can go under trade secret So all these kind of different kind of IPR uh, rights are governed by a proper act and rules which are laid down by our government. So uh, for example, trademark is governed by the Trademark Act which came into existence in 1999. Patent uh, is by a Patent Act uh, which came into existence in 1990. So as per the act and rules, uh, you know, these uh, it functions. So uh, what is copyright? So copyright is. Uh, copyright is the right which is given to the author for any literary or artistic work. Copyright uh, can be given for any books, published paper, paintings, artwork movies, uh, software algorithm, source code, uh, any digital digital content, for example, this PPT, uh, any lecture you are taking, or all these things can go under copyright. So uh, copyright uh, has a very long duration. The Once the copyright is protected, it gives you a very long duration of protection which is author's life plus 70 years after the author, author's death. So it is like once you register your copyright, it is you it will be with you for the lifetime, which is uh, not the same case for patent, trademark and design. You have to keep renewing uh, the other rights, but copyright, once you get it, it is mostly for your lifetime. And once you get a copyright, you can always use a disclaimer to which is a kind of a notification to the public that this work is copyrighted. For example, you can use this symbol. You can see the symbol. So this symbol and the year in which your work got protected and the company name and you can write all rights reserved. So this is the kind of notification to general public that this is a copyrighted work and they should not copy it. So under copyright, uh, there are different kind of rights that the owner gets. So, uh, for example, many times we have seen that, uh, you know, a movie is being made based on a novel. So the ownership of that story still remains with the, uh, you know, person who wrote the story and he can transfer his rights or he can give the rights to the movie maker to make a movie out of it, but the ownership still remains with him and he can even uh, earn royalty out of it. So this is how, you know, the rights can be transferred and you can commercialize and, you know, uh, earn money from your work. So these are the way these are the ways you can exploit your rights and use the legal rights which you get from the uh, government office. So these are the copyright examples, uh, literary work, the book, then the paintings, the photographs, drawings, movies, music, choreography, even the choreography can be copyrighted, sculptures. So these are the few different kind of works which can be protected under copyright. Then comes the trademark. So trademark not only protects the name and logo, but it also protects the sound, color, symbol or drawing. For example, you would have seen the McDonald's symbol. 
it is always in red and yellow color. So, you know, it the consumer builds an image that, you know, red and yellow color logo is for the uh, McDonald's. So that color also gets protected under trademark. So, of course, the trademark helps to help uh, let us identify the goods made or service offered by a company or an individual. Now, unlike copyright, trademark is registered only for 10 years, but it can be renewed every 10 years. So, how to get a trademark? It is not very easy to get a trademark because in trademark, uh, when we file for a trademark, we can get a lot of objections. In trademark, a lot of opposition also happens if you are using similar mark or if you are using generic names then it is not that easy to get a trademark registered. So that is why whenever you are creating a trademark, you should be very careful that the name is unique. And uh, it unique, for example, I've given few examples like Doordarshan. Doordarshan is a unique name. Then uh, it should be distinctive. For example, Beam. Beam is distinctive for the service which it which it is providing. Of course, Beam is not a very new name. It is a known name, but for the uh, kind of uh, you know payment service which it provides, for that service it is distinct. Then, ideally, it should be a non-dictionary word. If you self-coin a word, that will be the best uh, option for a trademark. Custom designs, devices or symbols, for example, make in India, non descriptive uh, trademarks. So uh, the word should not be very descriptive. For example, uh, for example, fair and lovely. So fair and lovely, even though it became popular because of long term usage, but suppose I am. Uh, you know, I have uh, made a cream which is, uh, you know, uh, in, uh, enhancing the complexion, then ideally the name should not be uh, such that it is by the name only you are describing your product. So such kind of descriptive word are very objectionable and it is very hard to get a trademark for such kind of words. So you should always avoid adjectives for example if somebody is selling ice cream then they should not write as a slogan tasty ice cream cold ice cream so these are very uh, you know uh, very objectionable again then uh, name of persons uh, of course you you should not uh, uh, put your own name in your uh, logo then uh, Religious words or symbol should be avoided. For example, Om or Ashoka Chakra. Then common shapes. I, you should be little bit creative about your logo. It should not be always round or circle. If you can be little bit more creative in designing your logo, these things really make your uh, you know trademark unique, and the chances of getting protection protection of the trademark increases. So as you can see, uh, Adidas, Apple, these are good trademarks because these are very distinctive. Even though Apple, everyone know it is a fruit, but it is very distinct for the uh, kind of laptop and mobile service which it provides. It is a distinct trademark in that category. Then again, this, if you see Pizza Hut, Chapstick, these are again, it is very descript descriptive trademarks and generic trademarks. So these are not a very good example of trademarks, but Adidas, Apple, Kodak, Amazon, uh, Flipkart. These are few uh, example of trademarks which are which we can call it as a strong trademark. Then uh, Patent, uh, we will speak a little bit more about patent because I told patent is a very, uh, you know, it is the king of IP, IPR. So uh, we file a lot of patents. So how do we approach, uh, you know, uh, how uh, if I can discuss that with one small case, then it might help you like what is the patent filing process? 
So whenever an inventor approaches us saying that they want to file for a patent, so basically that invention or that innovation needs to be evaluated in three aspects. One is inventive step, one is novelty, and one is industrial application. So these kind of these three things has to be there in your innovation or invention to get a patent from the government office. So now suppose some inventor comes and they tell that we have invented a smart wearable watch. So now we all know that smart wearable watch is already a category in the market. It is not a new per se. So of course they would have invented some new features or they would have added some value added feature to the product. So the inventor says, yes, we have two features which are new in our product, such as it has QR code scanning camera with biometric scanning technologies for payment transaction. And it has a solar cell integrated watch frame with flexible silicon wafers for self charging. So they are claiming that these two features are new. One is that they have a QR code scanning camera, uh, biometric scanning capabilities for making payment or doing transactions and second is they are self charging they have some silicon wafers uh, which uh, helps in efficient charging of the watch so now even though they claim even though they invented not claim inventor feels that okay these two features are new and we can get a patent for that but sometimes it is not enough because we know that QR uh, scanning uh, and use of biometric is also a known technology. OK, so we will we we have to ask the inventor to explain the specific technical problem which your invention is solving. For example, if they are saying field of payment, they are able to do payment via smartwatch, then we have to further ask in terms of payment via smartwatch, what is that unique problem which this watch is solving? OK, then specify the inventive problem in view of the existing product in the market. So there might be few other watches with this enabled uh, biometric capabilities to make the transaction. So how it is different technically or how it is technically advanced from such similar products? So that is why we first evaluate the invention that what are the, you know, even one or two narrow features where we can concentrate to, you know, draft the patent and, you know, highlight the novelty so that the patent gets granted. So that is why initially the patentability or novelty search becomes very important because we first have to analyze this because drafting, drafting becomes very easy if you know the key focus where uh, the novelty lies in your invention. So uh, after doing search, if we feel that the invention is novel, however, it is very obvious uh, the payment uh, using QR code and uh, uh, you know, a use of biometric data, it is very obvious. So we have to, uh, you know, we have to, uh, ask give more technical details like what specific technical problem it is solving and also if you see these are the two standalone features both are not related to each other one novelty the inventor is saying is about payment and one novelty is he's saying about self-charging so in a patent we can file only one inventive concept we cannot claim two different inventive concept as a novel feature in our invention so all these are different kind of evaluation which needs to be done before we file for a patent. So the search really helps because we first of all, we identify all the similar uh, patents, all the similar products which are already there in the market, what all they are doing. And then we ask the inventor specifically, like for example, if they are focusing on the payment then we need to specify exact problem, uh, you know, which this they are solving during payment. For example, in many watch, you know, because of the gesture, uh, faulty gesture, 
the payment happens or in a inappropriate payment initiation happens because th those are the errors. So might be this inventor is solving that specific problem via this uh, watch. So this is how we probe the inventor. We ask them for the questions and we finally get a small narrow data set which we feel that yes, this is something which is new and we can build our claims and build draft our patent based on that. So this I just uh, discussed this with you to just to give you an insight of how the patent filing process is, how you know what are the basic steps which are involved in filing a patent. Then comes the industrial design. So industrial design is given to the creator of the product over the aesthetic and noble appearance of the product. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, for example, uh, somebody develops, manufactures a bottle with a very unique shape, or uh, especially in the field of jewelry, right? So jewelry is a market wherein the designers come up with unique designs uh, to, you know, uh, to make it competitive. Because if they don't make unique designs, the, their sales will go down. So especially in the field of jewelry and clothes, there is there are a lot of design, uh, you know, design patents filed. So for industrial design, unlike patent where the main criteria was novelty, inventive step, industrial application, in industrial design, there is nothing like that. Only the product should have some eye catching feature. It should be new or original. It means it should be your own work. And it should not be functional or useful. It means we do, we cannot protect the functionality or advantages of the product under industrial de design. And should not be artistic nature like painting and sculpture because painting and sculpture will go under copyright. It is a subject matter, literary subject matter. So it will not come under design. So these are few of the example. For example, you can see a unique, uh, uh, you know, different uh, unique pattern of chair, uh, different design of bike, car. So these are few examples of industrial design. So then comes the geographical indication. So geographical indication is always given to a community rather than an individual owner or an uh, individual person. So. Uh, Geographical indication, uh, for example, uh, basmati rice. So basmati rice is grown in a particular region of Himalaya by a group of farmers and the taste and the unique texture of the rice grain uh, is claimed that the, it can grow only in that region and the farmers, the community, the community of farmers there, they are skilled to uh, you know, uh, do that process of sowing and harvesting and everything. So such kind of products get a GI tag. So uh, these are the different kind of IPR which we discussed. Patents, trademark, copyright, geographical indication, industrial design and trade secret. So in an organization, what should be the ideally, uh, you know, what should be the share of IPR if I say? So initially, IP recognition is very important because in many organizations, in colleges, it do happens that there are many types of IPR work which are being created. But just because awareness is not there, so it is never uh, recognized. So IP recognition and IP recognition will also lead to creation because once you are aware about, you know, OK, these are the things which are of value, which we can protect, which we can, you know, uh, legally own it, then you will have that uh, mindset to, you know, come up with more such work. So IP recognition and creation is the key. Then brand protection. Uh, of course, if you are a startup, if you are a entrepreneur, then brand protection uh, should be, uh, you know, part of your entrepreneurship journey. 
and then once you do these things management because all these ipr rights they come with timelines so if suppose your uh, patent gets granted or trademark gets granted you have to watch the time that you have to keep renewing them keep maintaining them because these are all time bound if you miss any timeline your ip gets abandoned and you will not be able to revive it so ip management also is equally important so what is the need for ip management so of course one is to position yourself to show your organization as an innovative you know organization a progressive organization so positioning it helps you in ip positioning then uh, it, it is very important for any business especially small business where they depend mostly on one technology so just imagine their their whole business is dependent on one particular technology and if that technology gets copied and you have not patented it you have not legally owned it then you will not be able to do anything because if you have legal ownership you can stop them you can send them a legal notice you can do some you know uh, by law you have support to take actions but you if you have not protected it and you can't do anything you can just request them and your whole business might be at risk then ip monetization is another aspect of ip why you should do ip protection if you have good technologies good products in your name definitely you can license them you can sell them and you can create revenue out of your ipr uh, assets so th these are few uh, you know points where ipr can help us so again uh, the ipr can be commercialized via different ways licensing is one of them so we uh, many times we see that uh, you know even the government offices so they come up with good technology okay for example one one case i remember uh, in tamil nadu the agricultural government institute they came up with a very good invention of packaging the flower because they used to send those uh, jasmine flowers there is a good trade of jasmine flowers from tamil nadu to outside india to several countries and that used to take minimum 48 to 72 hours for the flowers to reach those countries so many flowers used to get rotten and lot of loss was happening because of that uh, 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 thing so they came up with a very good packing technology wherein they used ice packs and few chemicals and that increased the shelf life of the flowers to almost 6 7 hours more so they could really uh, you know uh, reduce their loss and they became more efficient and more countries you know approached them for this so they licensed this technology to many companies who were involved in the packaging and you know, transportation business so that's how if you come up with a good technology good patents there will be several means of licensing and monetizing your ipr rights so how do you think uh, uh, you know we can be more uh, innovative how can we contribute to this ipr culture so of course be more innovative so innovative means there are lot of problems around us technically in our daily lives for small small things we encounter with a lot of problems so if we have a mindset to always think of a solution so invention need not be always a very big invention big product big machines nothing like that small small uh, you know uh, small products small solutions can be a very big uh, innovative uh, product in the market for example post it so the person who came up with this idea post it it was such a small idea a small piece of paper with a glue and you know uh, uh, for your anybody can use it for quick notes 
and that became a big hit in the market. So the, so that's what uh, you have to be always innovative to uh, you know create IP, think outside the box, and uh, protect original, produce original work. So always, whenever you are innovating, try and produce original instead of copying from other patents or from other products. It really doesn't help because uh, somewhere in the patent filing journey, you'll get stuck and the uh, chances of patent grant will be less. So if, if you do original work, even there is one small novelty there, the patent office will recognize that and they will give you a patent. But if they feel it's a copied thing, then it becomes very difficult. And so, and also a few other ways to think when you are innovating is whenever you are building a product, you should always think whether it is viable in the marketplace. That is whether the product acceptance, product fit in the market is there or not. I think many of you must be watching Shark Tank, uh, which comes, uh, uh, which is coming now, I think. So in Shark Tank, we can see so many inventors, product owners, they pitch their ideas right uh, in front of the sharks. So they're, you know, they're, they look into these things that, OK, innovation is there, but whether the product fit is there, whether the market is ready to accept it. So there are many factors. You, we cannot think that, OK, uh, I, I am a very great inventor. I, I know technology very well and I can I will just do it and it will be a big success. No, that's not. You have to analyze it from all points. So cost effectiveness, the usefulness of the product, whether the uh, market is ready for that or are there already simple solutions already existing? So all these are the pointers which you should think before you, uh, uh, when you are in the process of innovating and building a new product. So, so these are the few things. And uh, so you should always observe IP all around us, understand relevance of it for business growth. So it do happens that unconsciously we use so many IP right? IPR, uh, you know, protected products or processes in our daily life. But because we are not aware, we don't think about it. We don't observe it, right? So uh, we should be more observant. We should always recognize, audit, and commercialize our own internal IP. And uh, whenever we are on the path of innovation, we are developing something, we should try to uh, you know register it so that the risk is less and you have legal right over it you can use it patent gives you 20 years of legal right so you can use it you can license it you can give to any other manufacturers so there are many options available and always remember that trademark and brands are an integral asset of your business So that's it. So uh, uh, I think I covered, I touched upon the basic uh, of IPR. And if you all have any questions, you all can let me know. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much for contribution. If uh, participants, if you have any questions, uh, you can provide to ma'am or you can unmute yourself and speak to a salesperson. If there is any question from the college side, it can be raised now. Okay, so I read one question. Uh, Dr. Sagar Sharma. Okay, so Dr. Sagar Sharma, uh, you are asking what is preferable, trade secret or patent? So this is, uh, it depends on your uh, invention or the type of work, what you have created. So there is no fixed rule for that. So uh, generally, if your, the nature of work which you have created is technical, 
for example if it is a machine or if it is a new composition uh, wherein some ingredients are unique or the process of making the composition is unique then mostly we can go for a patent we, because we can easily protect it under patent but suppose if you have come up with a process okay process of successfully doing a business you have maintained some standards some rules and by using that process you are able to do a good business make a good profit but this is something which is not very technical in nature and you might not be able to get a patent for that in that case you can go for a trade secret i hope uh, i answered your question Thank you, Sagar sir. Is there any other question from the participant side? I think there is no other question. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Tanu ma'am, for your valuable time. Uh, you have given us time in a busy schedule. Thank you so much once again. uh so i would like to say i would like to add one more thing that uh, tanu ma'am has been uh, you know uh, with us uh, from very long so uh, i i personally thank tanu ma'am for this wonderful contribution of us uh thank you so much college uh, sagar sharma sir for his contribution uh, for this 3 days program i would like to uh, i would like to uh, call uh, for the vote of thanks for the last day session uh sagar sir uh, whoever is allocated for the vote of thanks i would like to invite him sir thank you biplup thank you so much thank you so much ma'am thank you um good afternoon to all now i would like to offer a formal vote of thanks uh, respected principal sir am i audible yes 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 sir you are audible Am I? Yes, sir. You are. You are. Am I audible? Go ahead, sir. Okay. Respected principal, sir, senior faculty members of our college, today's uh, resource person, Tanu Singh, madam, my colleagues, and dear students, uh, it is my pleasure to propose a vote of thanks on behalf of IPSC for this uh, three-day FDD program held from 3rd to 5th April. At the outset. i would like to thank principal sir harminder nath for his support guidance and encouragement in organizing such kind of programs and workshops i would also take this opportunity to thank all the resource person from day one onwards dr n r sankar mr gregory manoj and tanu singh madam for the insightful talk madam thank you for detailed talk on ipr and its various categories and i am certain that both faculty and students alike are benefited from your talk i would also like to thank icd academy with whom we have a functional mou and a special thanks to mr subhas upadhyay mr sanka medhi and mr biplab for coordinating and organizing this three day fdp session smoothly i would also like to thank members of iqac institutions innovation council and ipr cell for the help in organizing this fdp program now i would like to express my gratitude to all the faculty members and non teaching staff of our college for the necessary support and help and finally i like to thank all the participants of this event for making this event successful with this i conclude my vote of thanks speech thank you thank you dr sagar it was nice to be a part of this session thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, so uh, thank you so much to the all the participants uh, joining us for this three day session i would soon uh, share the uh, feedback link shashank would contact with sagar sharma sir and uh, share the vote of uh, share the feedback link for uh, the feedback of all those three speakers and tanu ma'am i would surely uh, send you the feedback uh, as soon as possible sir sure sure i look forward to that thank you so much okay. thank, thank you. you thank you so much. thank you bye thank you thank, thank you, you. So thank you. I would officially uh, end this session for this three days. Thank you so much. Very much.